All right, welcome back to Eyes Open Media. Hope you guys are doing well. It's November 1st, 2017. Um, this video is actually going to come out the same time as the main channel's video, Currency 365. Please subscribe to both channels. On on this channel right here, Eyes Open Media, we have almost six, uh, almost 5,000 subscribers, uh, which is awesome. Uh, which is This is our backup channel. On the main channel, we're getting closer to 13,000 subscribers, so which is awesome. Um, I did post a crypto gamers video here about the institution uh, money and uh, 26 million new crypto investors by January 1. Uh, and then also Peter Diamond uh, talks about the abundance uh, and implications of exponential uh, change. Uh, and also uh, the uh, news BTC video here on the CME group to trade Bitcoin futures. And Bitcoin at an all-time high. Okay, we'll look at the cryptos last. Uh, but let's get into this. Um, Maliki is up for a Nobel Peace Prize. Not Maliki, excuse me. Um, Berzani, I mean, Abadi. I, I said Maliki, then I said Berzani. <laughs> uh, Abadi is actually up for a Nobel Peace, uh, Peace Prize uh, for the job he's done in Iraq to free the the, uh, the land of terrorism and and to help stable the region uh, and, and the world. So, which is complete bullcrap to me, but it is what it is. I talk about that on the main video already, so I'm not going to go in there. But uh, this guy here on Twitter, uh, Michael uh, Pragent, I don't know who this guy is. Uh, I think I've heard the name before. He must be some type of reporter or newscaster or something. He says, a body is not our man in Baghdad. He was Maliki's deputy uh, when Maliki was our man in Baghdad. Maliki reminds him of his place every day. And I bet he does. I bet Maliki, I bet Maliki the reason why we haven't seen nothing in a body uh, for three years is because of Maliki. And we continue to say this over and over again, but people don't want to believe us. You know, a body's this, a body's that. But for three years, he's had the same results as Oba uh, as Maliki. Nothing. Okay, <laughs> no jobs for the for the citizens, no purchasing power for the citizens, no nothing for the citizens, right? And so Maliki's the same way. Maliki had nothing for the citizens, and also they can't pass laws unless unless they, it goes against them, like the Kurdish region. Then they went in there and they passed like seven straight laws, uh, but they couldn't. They, for three years, they haven't been able to pass laws for the citizens' benefits, but they were able to go pass laws quickly in 24 hours against the Kurdish region. So, when you can, when you see signs like that, you know that something is not right, right? How can you go in there and pass seven laws against the Kurdish region overnight and then send military in there, but yet three years your land isn't liberated from ISIS? Uh, for, uh, publicly, and also, uh, you know, in three years, there's nothing for the citizens once again, right? So that is the that's because of Maliki, and same thing in the CBI. Every year, Alok says, hey, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the project to lead to three zeros," and it never happens because he's a product of pro, uh, a product of Maliki. So uh, we have all these people saying good things in the public eye when they're when the cameras on them, but the result is still the same we haven't seen anything right um so yeah it's kind of interesting there i'm glad somebody else said something about it instead of just me because the rest of the dinar community praise is all praising a body as they continue to wait to for, to see nothing happen okay so i think i'm the only one in in the iqd community that's actually gone after um a body and these other people because I, I, all I see in the Dinar community and in the, in the IQD community is this praising a body, but yet you haven't seen any changes in three years, okay? And I mean public changes. I'm not talking about what they've done or the one-to-one -one has happened privately and all this bullcrap. I don't care about none of that. Publicly, nothing has changed in Iraq, okay? Um, and you can ask the people on Twitter. They'll tell you, <laughs> okay? Now, do their, do, do, do their country look different and, and they have new buildings and stuff? Yeah, but that's what's supposed to happen. You're, you're no longer in, you know, Dash only controls, uh, that Dash doesn't even co control any percentage of your country pu privately, right? Publicly, they still control a little bit, but privately, Dash has been gone for 
long time okay so yeah you're supposed to have new buildings and stuff like that and come up so yeah that, i mean that's just normal but do you have purchasing power do you have do you have the oil revenues you know are you getting your uh your oil back pay do you have your laws and do you have any important laws to date no you don't so i mean the the amnesty law was had to be um redone like 9,000 times over the last three three years because they couldn't even get that right. So, I mean, it's a big joke. Um, let's continue because this video is not going to be long. Uh, a serious uh, government... I, I want to get back to my happy place. And and when I talk about these fools in, 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 in Iraq, uh, it, it takes me out of my happy place, right? My happy place is, is, is cryptocurrencies and stocks and, and actually making money, right? <laughs> you know, and, and actually making money and seeing other people make money. It's not talking about this country that refuses to 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 do anything for themselves right uh but only wants to steal uh so you know until they until they get their acts together you know uh then it's going to continue that way um a lock did you know remove the restrictions if you remove the look i'm mean, let me say this if you remove the restrictions in the mcp where's the rate <laughs> you know like like why do we have to wait six months for a rate if you have removed the mcp and the restrictions what why is the imf and the world bank and the u.s treasury and other countries allowing iraq to do this to the world right if you remove the multiple currency practice if you remove the restrictions we should see a rate because you're not that means that you're not flooding in u.s dollars any longer uh, to hold uh, the rate steady. That means we should see a new rate. We, matter of fact, the rate should fluctuate every day. Like every other country does if you have no restrictions on it and, and you don't have the MCP on it anymore. Why is not Why is the rate still the same? Okay, so, I mean, they, they're, they're, allowing the, they're allowing Iraq to get away with, with, with all this stupid stuff, man. And, and, and it is what it is, man, you know? <laughs> I want to get back to my happy place, and I, and I will and once this video is over. <laughs> Okay, um, a serious uh, a serious government warning of the water situation in Iraq. Now, who controls the water in Iraq? The Kurdish region, right? The Kurds control the water. The Kurds, the Kurds control the internet and the water, right? And they have a lot of oil. <laughs> it's a you know it's amazing. Well, I guess they don't have that much oil anymore because they they just lost Kirkuk, which was really probably one one of the biggest oil fields in Iraq, right? So back down back over to federal government, you know, uh, jurisdiction. So Kurds still have oil, but they don't have a lot that like they used to with the Kurdistan region and the other regions and the other I mean the Kirkuk region and the other regions that they had in the disputed areas. So it is what it is. So they they've definitely shrunk and they've shrunk them their uh, percentages in the budget now as well from seventeen percent to 12.67 or something like that so we'll see how that goes but Kurds Kurds have definitely shrunk uh, in, in their areas but we still haven't seen article 140 for some strange reason um, so yeah this is gonna be interesting the drinking water and all the waters what's gonna happen with the water uh, because you know these guys these guys own a lot of the water so we'll see what happens with that uh, if they play around with it, I'm pretty sure a body's going to go in there with the with the uh, troops and try to take over the water uh, from the Kurdistan region. Uh, Baghdad cuts the share of Kurdistan from budget to uh, 12.67. Yeah, I just talked about that. I also talked about it on the main channel as well, so I'm not going to talk about that here. Let's uh, hit the uh, translation button and let's see what they're talking about here. It says, uh, Trend Press uh, publishes the decisions of Iraq's meeting with the International Monetary Fund. I mean, this is getting ridiculous. How many meetings do you can you have at one country? I mean, God, Lee, you know, uh, and this is the Article 4 uh, consultation uh, of 2017 for the second review under the three-year uh, credit agreement. I'm pretty sure this is not dealing with a lock. This is dealing with Soleil. Yeah, Soleil. So Soleil deals with this one. Um, says the economic advisor to the Prime Minister Lay, Iraq received $4 billion from the international institution supporting. Stop giving these people money, man. 
you know, we're not going to see nothing if these people continue to talk about, yeah, we got four billion here, we got another two billion coming next year, we got we we got we got, we got uh, three billion coming from Japan, we got six billion coming from Germany, we got a hundred eight hundred million coming from Australia. Like we're never going to see, we're not going to see this country go back into the international stage if everybody's giving them money. You know what I mean? Like, come on, this is crazy. And I think they need like seventy bucks for their um, but to to wipe out their budget deficit. You know, so I mean, shoot, oil's at sixty one dollars right now. I mean, imagine if the if oil gets to seventy bucks, they they're getting they're getting all this money from all these countries, and then oil's oil at seventy bucks, and they wipe out their deficit. They don't need to raise their value. They won't even need to go international raise their value. They have no they they would they would have no deficit. And all the bunch of loans and grants from all these countries, they they was they would just stay exactly where they at. Why would I raise my value if I have everything I need? <laughs> I can keep the citizens poor, and I can and we can continue to have money with no debt. <sighs> That's unbelievable. Um, this is the document the uh, the price of the barrel of oil needed to fill the budget deficit. It, I think it's seventy. Says uh, Saudi Arabia, the world's largest oil exporter, needs oil to reach seventy dollars a barrel to fill the budget deficit. Okay, Iran needs uh, fifty-two. From according to Yemen, Iraq would need fifty-six. Uh, two what? Fifty-six for Iraq? They have already reached that. The oil Brent oil is at sixty bucks right now. So Iraq would it wouldn't even have a deficit next year if oil just stayed right where it's at. Wow. <laughs> That's a good incentive to raise the value. No, not. You know, um, Moody's here has the outlook for uh, Vietnam banking system is positive, and Vietnam has been so patient waiting on Iraq to make a move so they could make a move. You remember last year around the same time Vietnam says at the end of this year we are going to make a move uh, with our uh, you know with our you know with our notes and in our pricings and stuff. That didn't happen. Why? Because they're waiting on Iraq. I know a lot of you guys said, no, no, Vietnam's not waiting on anybody. They can do whatever they want. But as you can see, they've came out twice in the last three years saying they were going to make a move, and they never did. Okay? Um, so let's see if they, let's see if they uh, say something this year or they just keep quiet because, you know, I would just keep quiet. <laughs> Until and just let and, and just wait for Iraq and then and then make a move after Iraq, but you know they want to talk they want they can talk you know Moody's give them a, a positive outlook from their banking system so that's good, all right so Vietnam's looking good so it's a positive outlook for the next twelve to eighteen months and of course your Vietnam's economy has been booming for like seven straight years, uh so you know the, everything in Vietnam is just it's booming now one of the things that I don't like about Vietnam is that they did. Uh, go in on cryptocurrencies. Now, it wasn't Vietnam itself. It was the central bank of Vietnam. So that's a big difference, right? So the central bank of Vietnam does not like cryptocurrencies. Of course they wouldn't. They're for the fiat system, right? No central bank is going to like cryptocurrencies unless they create their own coin, okay? Because, you know, you're taking money out of their hands. Uh, you're taking the power from them when you use cryptocurrencies and not their fiat money, right? So they want people using fiat money, and they want people to be enslaved in fiat money. They don't want people to be free in cryptocurrencies, okay? Uh, because also they, you know, they they want you to they want to get the fees and all that other stuff from you using that type the fiat money as well. Um, so of course they're against it. But what the central bank, the, the smart central banks will say, we're not a, we're we're not for it because we're a fiat, but we're going to make our own coin. That's all you do. You know what I mean? That's all. I mean, Vietnam could be like, we're going to make the, 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 the dong crypto. You know what I mean? The Vietnamese dong crypto is coming, right? Like, like China, like, uh, Russia's doing. Russia's creating, I think, two current cryptocurrencies now. They got the, uh, crypto ruble coming and then there's another one coming. So they're, they're not going to sit there and say, oh, we hate cryptocurrency. We just, we're going to join you and, but we're going to make our own coin, right? For our own country. So. And we're gonna make money that way. So that's a that's an incentive uh, for Vietnam. Maybe Vietnam could think about making their own coin, uh, you know, the Dong coin or something like that, <laughs> Dong crypto, you know, and uh, they'll be fine, right? And then they can they could use that to pay bills. And imagine America having the uh, 
uh, you know, a, the dollar crypto, you know, the, you know, or call it the USA crypto or, you know, USD crypto, right? And then what they will do is you will supply that crypto currency out to the world and you'll take those funds and you'll pay off your debt, your deficit. I mean, it's that simple. Right. If America, if Donald Trump announced a, uh, a dollar crypto or USD crypto and he launched it and maybe he, he put some some things that the, 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 the coin could do. Right. There's some special features the coin could do, could access. It could have you could use a coin to access. Um, I don't know, whatever, you know, whatever he comes up with. Right. Whatever they come up with. But it has like see special access to, to, to things. Right. And. He puts it out and he, and he supplies, let's say he supplies um, 50 billion uh, U.S. dollar cryptos, right? And, you know, and they're going for, let's say they're going for like um, five cents a piece or whatever the case. I mean, those things will sell out, right? And he could take that money, you know, and he could take the money and he could, he could pay off the deficit with it, right? And so... You know, and he could actually make an endless supply of it. It doesn't hear. It, it could start out. It could start off at like fifty billion. They're gonna have fifty billion of them, and and then he could, if he needs to, you know, pay off more def, deficit or he wants to build roads, he dump another billion into the market, you know, and pay off the roads. You know what I mean? And and, and build new roads and build new infrastructure. Instead of using the dollar dollar fiat money and printing money, he could just you could use the blockchain and 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 uh and print cryptos instead and do the cryptos and mine the cryptos and then use that money uh to 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 build rebuild roads rebuild houses communities get rid of the ghettos and suburbs and have people in and be um, not not the suburbs but get rid of the ghettos and the um, government facilities and have everybody in suburbs and nice areas and rich areas rebuild America, right? Because he said, make America great again. So create your own crypto, bring it out, use the money, pay off the debt, including the, when Iraq makes their move, you can also use Iraq to pay off the debt as well. And also you can then build the roads, build houses, build new airports, build new everything for America and make America look beautiful. You know what I mean? Because right now America has bad bridges, bad roads, bad infrastructure, bad uh, grid. Our grid is the oldest grid in the world. That's crazy. And it's terrible. Uh, and we have all these, we got a bad air, our airports are horrible. I mean, so... You know, we could we could get all that with the crypto coin, right? So, and I'm thinking I'm thinking that's what Russia is going to do. Russia is going to be doing that. They're going to have two cryptos, and they're going to use that to fund and rebuild Russia and make Russia powerful. They could have a massive military, which they already have now, but they could even have a bigger one because they have this coin, which is making them money as people buy it, and and they can then fund even a bigger military and do other things. You see what I'm saying? So. I hope Donald Trump uh, does something like that for America because it would wipe our debt off and it would also uh, build a whole bunch of like, uh, you know, build uh, communities up and roads and stuff like that as the world buys the U.S. dollar crypto, right, and trades it back and forth. And, and the cool thing about it is that Donald Trump and, and the, and the uh, central bank could actually have an exchange, like their own, like they could build their own exchange for it. And so every time people buy and sell it, they're also getting fees from that. And that can also then go to, to um, for schools, uh, to rebuild schools and, and stuff like that and help people. So, I mean, that's something to think about. I mean, it's, it, would, it would definitely work, you know, as America is the number one country in the world right now. So people would want to grab that coin, right? So, and, you know, it would be a big benefit. But, of course, that's me thinking and that's how my brain works. And that's not how a lot of people's brains work. So... I'm pretty sure in three years from now, there still won't be a, a U.S. crypto or anything like that. And we would and America will not take advantage of cryptocurrency. Matter of fact, America will probably continue to get stricter and stricter on cryptocurrencies instead of actually embracing it to help reduce the, you know, to, to, to um, make America great again. Right. America is going to be doing the opposite. America's the, the land of the free, which is really, we're really not the land of the free. I mean, God, we have so much restrictions and taxes and all types of stupid stuff. But, and we're, and we're also 
hard on on cryptocurrencies and i think we're gonna probably can that's probably gonna continue and it's not gonna open up and say hey we're gonna be able to use crypto to wipe out all our debts off nope because that's not the incentives of the of uh of the elites of the elites need america to crumble for the new world order so you know they don't want america to be in the crypto world and and and, and being debt free and chilling right <laughs> they want america to just starve and under under debt um that's what they really want right so <laughs> we'll see how this goes hopefully that doesn't happen and maybe we'll have seven years of fruitful years in america and then and then after that we'll uh get hit with some tsunamis or something <laughs> and then things will change um let me wrap it up here bitcoin's looking good about to see 666 <laughs> wouldn't that be something i think somebody's going to capture that uh somebody's going to capture i bet somebody's going to do a screenshot when bitcoin's at 6666 six six <laughs> that would be crazy right six thousand six hundred and sixty six uh dollars and sixty six cents if, if that hits i think somebody's gonna capture that and matter of fact if you capture that you might be able to sell that on ebay right i, I mean that's how sick people are but I'm, I'm pretty sure somebody's gonna try to do something stupid like that capture it and then put it on ebay for sale for like 10 bucks you know i, I captured bitcoin at this price <laughs> um NEO just dropping, Amusa Gold just dropping, everything's dropping, EOS still up, I'm going to quickly go to Golems at 22%, but it's been dropping, all these coins have been dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping with nothing, to, no future ahead of them, <laughs> with most of them, right, most of them have no future ahead of them, just continuing to drop and bow to Bitcoin, you know, unfortunately. For the altcoins, a lot of them are going to die out next year. By next summer, all these, a lot of these coins are going to be dead. Um, that's why I said Omiso Go, NEO, Litecoin, Dash, uh, Zcash, um, you know, Monero. Those are going to be the ones that might be able to hold on and and uh, and do something with themselves. And that's because of news, right? Business deals and news is going to keep those coins alive, in my opinion. And then, of course, the ones that, are that, that have the, um, the the platform, the lending platforms like Hextra, BitConnect, uh, Electra, and all those, we don't know what's going to happen with those. Um, they should be able to make it at least another year, and then from there, we wouldn't, we won't, we don't know from there, okay? But at some point, everything comes to an end, right? <laughs> On online, so don't expect these things to be there for three, four, or five years. A lot of these, a lot of these lending platforms are going to probably be good for six months to a year, and then they're gone, right? So just enjoy it while it lasts, and that's it, and move and keep it moving. Peace out, everybody. Eyes open. Uh, like, subscribe, and share. And I'm done for the day. <laughs>